Let's see. It says we're live. It says we are live. It says we're live. Here we are. Test, test, test. Audio, audio. Do we have audio? Let's see what this is. I find that I can um, see the chat a lot better on my phone than I can on my tablet. So I'm going to try and use it today. If I set it over here, is that going to work? E.S. Taylor, how are you doing there, sir? I bet the Model T at the back has one of those Auga horns. You bet it does. Auga. All right. That sounds like I got audio. Michael. Thank you so much for jumping on here, Michael. I don't remember where Michael's from. He's not in Canada. Where is he? GW Rules. Check out some of these. Now, these are pretty cool. And I'm going to switch to that camera. Look at this little fella. Isn't this awesome? I like putting it out there when I can. Uh, really quick little paint job. Uh, a lovely little Tamiya um, 148th scale bulldozer. How awesome is that? How awesome is that for 148th scale? Um, Something like a Komatsu or something like that. Some sort of, uh, I think, a Japanese bulldozer. Um, really cool. Which is weird because Tamaya does not do very many 148th scale uh, Japanese vehicles, like from World War II. Most of their uh, World War II stuff is in 135th scale, you know, which is cool. By the way, that's what I started off with when I was uh, just a young whippersnapper. Uh, really, that was almost like my gateway into gaming was um, uh, building models. You know, probably, you know, even before I was a teenager, uh, getting Tamaya models and putting them together. Anyway, this is a pretty cool little model. Uh, I wish they did more 148th scale. Um, I wish they, I, I really wish they did more 148 scale, uh, especially for some of the Japanese vehicles, some of their, some of their old tanks and stuff like that. You can find some out there, um, but they are pricey. They are pricey. Uh, Hasegawa has some 148 scale Japanese uh, models from World War II, some trucks, a, uh, a refueling, a little tank truck. Um, of course, a lot of model airplanes are 148 scale. Nearly all of their 148, uh, nearly all the, the airplanes that you find for, for World War II, they're either going to be in 148th or 172nd. So it would just be nice if they did more, um, you know, vehicles. But, you know, that's probably not where the demand is. This is another Tamaya. Uh, a uh, Russian uh, vehicle truck from 148 scale. Really cool. Uh, this is one of those ACE models, uh, terrible models, but 148 scale. When I can find it, that's what I like. Uh, and now here's this. If you didn't see the last little uh, video that we did, this was a pretty rushed paint job so that I could get it on the table. So... You know, don't look too closely. <laughs> so, you know, when you're just trying to get it good enough to get it on the table, I haven't even put the uh, the uh, matte lacquer on it. I was still thinking about putting a few decals on it as well. So I might do that. What do you guys think? That looks pretty cool. I love having stuff like this, you know, because you can use this in a lot of different settings. You can, uh, you can use it in an urban setting. You can use it uh, for uh, like a military outpost. Uh, you could use it uh, at an airport, yada, yada. Good, good vehicle there. Now for comparison, and here's an armored car. Check that out. Let me switch back to that. Look at that. And this is another Ace. 
And I think I took the, the weapon off of it and just stuck a piece of wire in there. Uh, I'm not sure how well you guys can see that or it's focusing on there. Hey, Alan Shanks, how are you doing, sir? Hey, Smart Ass Podcast, how are you doing, buddy? Is that Chris or is that Eli on there? Let's see. And here's this little Ace uh, armored car. I, I like this. And I'm, I actually ordered another one of these because I, I want to paint a, another one of them up. And uh, as far as the... Uh, as far as the ACE models, uh, these little armored cars are not are not bad at all. So these these are actually one of their better attempts. Vincent, how are you, sir? Thank you for jumping on there. And now here is 156 scale, and I'm gonna I, I got this out, and this is Rubicon models. Uh, not a bad size vehicle, you know. If you know, and it is basically about the same size as uh, a car. And that's really not too far off from some of those light tanks. You know, um, you know, you compare that to, to that one. Um, now it doesn't really scale very well for what it actually is. I think this was something like a four or maybe even five person tank. I don't remember. It was ridiculous, but I really couldn't imagine it, you know, in this size, really couldn't imagine it more than maybe about three people. Um, so very cool though. And there were certainly little small tanks like that. So, and that's what I'm going to work on today. That's what I want to work on today. So today I got this Tamaya model here. Maybe I should show it to this camera. I wonder if I can get it on there. It will actually show up. There it is, almost. Well, except for the horrible glare on it. Look at that. Look at that. Really early, fun little tank. Uh, I love the rivets on it. It's got so it's got the rivets. That's how early it is. Um, it has, uh, you know, its silhouette is very reminiscent of some uh, Japanese tanks. So I actually will probably end up using it as part of my Manchukuo uh, campaign, but it'll be fun to include in a lot of stuff. Now, one thing that was weird in this one, and I don't know, do you guys do very many tanks out there? Is anybody out there a model? Especially in the 30s, talk talks like trucks can be okay with a bit of scale creep. Oh, yes, Alan, 100%. I agree. Um, trucks are pretty much scale agnostic for the most part. You can easily use trucks from just about any um, model uh, and drop it into 28 millimeter because uh, trucks were all different sizes. You could say that uh, almost about cars as well. Not as much, not quite as much, but almost. So. This is going to be um, another very early tank. You know, uh, obviously, I, I play mainly in the uh, intra-war period, uh, late 1920s to uh, 1930s. Let's see. So this, is, this has a weird thing on it. Has anybody out there ever put this one together? Where is it? Where did I? Oh, no, I lost it already. Never mind. It doesn't have a weird thing. <laughs> what did I do with it? Dang it. <laughs> oh, well. That's what I get for being me. Uh, pod. Uh, hey, Smart Ass Podcast. What are you guys working on these days? What's your next video going to be about? If you guys haven't uh, checked out the Smart Ass Podcast Boys, uh, you order. Uh, they do um, uh, a Smart Ass Podcast. Also, um, you got to go check out some of the stuff that uh, Eric Taylor has been doing as well. E.S. Taylor on here. Uh, he does a lot of really cool uh, Pulp Alley stuff. Uh, definitely worth going over there and checking out. So get over there and, and see some of the things that he's been putting together. This file has a bunch of dust on it.
Let's see, how does this go together? Is that uh, do the right piece there? I don't think I got the right piece. Oh, well, that's the that's that piece, and then that goes there, and then that goes there, and then there's a front and a back. Is that on here or is that somewhere else? H nine and H eleven. So that sounds like it's this over here. Boy, I tell you what though. Um, Tamaya continues to be one of my favorite models, um, makers that are available out there. They uh, definitely know their stuff, and they, they do a good job. Very seldom have I run into any sort of, you know, weird issues with the Tamaya. It, they almost always just fit so well. Um, so that's 11. No, what about 9? Can you see? Can you see a 9 on there? Help me look. That says 10. That says 11. God dang it, I need my glasses. That says 8. It's got to be somewhere in there, right? 10, 8, 7, 11. Oh, there's 9. Okay, it's the one that says 9 on it. See, that's why I couldn't find it is because they had a nine next to it. That's what was throwing me off. Okay. Snip that sucker out of there. Hasegawa, uh, they, they do some good stuff. Um, Ravel, you know, they're all, they, you know, they're okay. Okay, so this is the back. That is the back piece. See if I can figure this out. See if I can figure out how this goes together. I don't know. I might not be able to do this. I need may need to may need to Google it. Maybe may need some some professional help if you know what I mean. Uh, let's see. This was that side over there. Okay, so I think I can get those two pieces in, and then we'll go from there. So I use, sometimes I use the Tamaya um, thin cement, but I'm going to just kind of throw some testers on here. It's a little bit, you know, not quite as expensive. It's a little bit easier to use. And it definitely gives you some play time. You know, you can put the glue on there. And then you can fiddle with it until you get it where it needs to be, you know. And, you know, I, that's why, you know, I don't like using something that sets up too, uh, too fast for me. Um, you know, this testers, it, it it's kind of stays in place. That looks good. That looks good right there. All right. So that's one side. Look at that. We're, man, I am flying through this one. Holy cow. I already got a piece glued together. Um, yeah, you know, that was probably my start of getting into this sort of thing was, um, you know, putting models together and then that ended up going to, um, you know, uh, those old Avalon Hill, um, those old Avalon Hill bookcase games, like Squad Leader and stuff like that. That's like a natural, you know, progression, I would say. Um, going from one of those to the other. And that's, you know, I used to paint up, uh, build and paint up a lot of World War II uh, models. Let's see. Now I have this piece that says it is number H11. And it almost looks like it, it almost looks like it, what is, what, what, Let's see what's going on over here, dropping, we have some trailer reactions dropping this week, trailers from different movies, late to the dance, hey Jim, how you doing buddy, Panzer Leader, yeah, Neil Morgan, yeah, Panzer Leader, um, I, I'll admit I was more of a squad leader. I, I, I was definitely more, uh, into squad leader. Uh, and, um, 
you know, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. It was it was the game that I enjoyed playing. Let me see, which way does this go? I'm guessing it must go like that. That almost looks like it should have gone in already. Like maybe I should have put it in first. I wonder if that goes right there. I think it goes there. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna stick that piece in, and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna glue it. So I'm gonna. I don't know how many of you use this um, this glue, but basically you can use it to um, to glue things after you put it together, which is pretty handy sometimes if you can get things in the right spot, and then you can just glue it down. So that was just that little front. I, I think that's the front. Um, not really a glacis, but something like that. Just the front piece there. And then there's a back piece. D, W, low, Panzer Blitz, Panzer Leader. Very cool. You Panzer guys out there. Yeah, that was a... Uh, boy, you talk about a game. That That was a game that took just forever and a day to play sometimes, but I had a lot of fun uh, scenarios and stuff for it. All right, so I think I might use that thin glue again here. No, I think I can tester this. I'm just going to tester it. I think I see how it goes, so it's going to be okay to get some, get some glue on there. Yeah, uh, I remember one called War and Peace that was kind of a Napoleonics. Um, Luftwaffe, um, uh, a World War II uh, air, air, uh, airplanes. Uh, that was fun. Let's see. So that's in there now. Make sure I don't have that. So I'm really planning to use this this uh, tank in in some games. So that's going to be fun. Panzer leader, squad leader were mine. Panzer blitz. Yep. All right. So oh, I wish I could find that crazy piece that I saw. Oh, oh, here it is. Here it is. Get a load of this. It's almost like it's lead or something. Probably not lead. But for some reason, like they give you these metal pieces, two metal pieces, to put in the bottom of your tank, which I, I find kind of amusing. Like, what's the point of that? The point of it is just to add extra weight to give it to make it to make the bottom heavier. To give it some balance, but what the heck is the point of that? You know, it doesn't. I like who's 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 picking their tanks up and you know playing with them to the extent that it needs to be balanced. It just feels it just feels weird. Um. Yeah. See, and I'm not like these two pieces of metal. These two pieces of metal come in the package and at first I thought is it just some sort of security device or something that it was in there to like magnet thing or something I don't I it just blew my mind but yeah these these glue to, and the instructions it's like the next step that I'm going to they they glue to the bottom of the tank so yeah there's there's that and I I'm gonna do it <laughs> Although I have to admit, I don't know why. I I can't see the purpose of it. But they want me to glue metal uh, pieces to the bottom of the tank. Perhaps it's uranium. Maybe it's some sort of tracking device. That um, so not only do you glue them to the to the inside of the. Uh, uh, A13. Where's A13? I really ought to put my glasses on because I'm having a hard time seeing these. A13. Okay. Okay, so that and that. 
So you glue these pieces, these chunks of metal to the bottom of the tank. Give me an idea why. Who's Who could tell me why the heck you would do that? Because I'm doing it. And, and I and I don't know why. I'm doing I'm doing it because the instructions say to do it. But it seems awfully damn pointless. Um, so you glue this on those hexes. This is so weird. This makes no sense to me. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing with your tanks that you need? To be, is it for juggling purposes? In case you were a, a train juggle, uh, a tank juggler, you know you would want you would want your your tank to be balanced. That makes sense now. That's got to be what it is. That's got to be what it is. You want it to be balanced, right? You don't want it. I mean, when you're doing your juggling, so you glue these things on there, and then you put the metal. On those little studs. <laughs> this is so weird. Oh, those, this is so weird. So you put those two metal pieces, not just one, but you got to put two on there. And then you're going to glue the top. Uh, you're going to glue a little stud in the top to hold those metal pieces in place, just like that. How bizarre. I don't get that. It definitely adds, definitely adds uh, a lot of weight to the bottom. Cray cray. What scale do you guys use uh, mainly? Uh, do you have a preference out there on your scale? Um, is it, um, do you go with, uh, 143rd? I think a lot of the, uh, a lot of the die cast vehicles, they're either box scale, which means they just scale the vehicle to try to fit it in the box. So it's kind of wishy-washy what the exact scale is. Um, but a lot, you could say a lot of the die cast vehicles are about 143rd. And I do use some of those. Again, the trucks are easy to use because it just means it's a big truck. Uh, I find the cars to be a little too big for my eye, you know. And this is very much one of those what is what works for you uh, may not be, you know, for somebody else. Um so, and I got buddies that, that like to use the, the 143rd, and there's nothing wrong with that. Let's see, P2. P2. I wonder if that's these. I wonder if that's these. Because I don't see a P. That's A and A. And this is H. And this is... B. So I'm going to guess that these are P. I'm going to guess that these are P's. And they go on here. Hey, Marty. How you doing, buddy? One... Oh no! Does it? That's a, that's not going to stay on there. What the hell? Where does these go? That's where it's saying they go. They're not going to stay on there though. Ah, I don't like that. It's also putting too much pressure on the side of my tank. I'm going to leave those off for now. I'm going to leave those off because I, I, I don't kind of worried about those. I'm a little also worried that I'm going to lose them. Okay. So if I skip over that step, then that gets me to here. And P2, do not cement. 
So you don't you don't glue those on. Hmm. Yeah, I think this will work out pretty nice for a little um, a little Japanese tank. Um, very very similar silhouette to um, to like a Japanese tank. Uh, the suspension is a little bit different, but you know, oh well. I think for for what I do, it's it's perfectly fine. Okay, so I got running wheels. Let's see, how long is this video now? I guess we've hit the 30-minute mark. I probably ought to call it here. Uh, I do want to invite you guys to join us this evening. Um, I'm not actually sure if Bessie is going to be able to join us tonight or not, uh, but I would like to talk a little bit about the Kickstarter tonight and where we're at with everything because we've had a, we've hit a few uh, few more milestones that I think are worth uh, talking about. And uh, but Bessie went over; she had a dentist appointment today over in Tahlequah, so she's actually driving back right now um so we'll have to see how she feels we do have a microphone for her now though so she will have her very own microphone so we'll be able to pick her up a little bit easier or a lot easier we'll be able to hear her it'll be uh may maybe about just kind of finding a happy balance between the two microphones because to a certain extent her microphone will pick me up and and my microphone will pick her up, so we'll still have to find a, a good balance in there. So uh, if she's here tonight and, and we get her all hooked up to use her microphone and it's ready for her, I spent yesterday testing her microphone to try and make sure it was going to be ready to go. So hopefully she feels well enough to join us tonight. Uh, and that is at 8 p.m. It is a live video, so I'll invite you guys back at 8 o'clock tonight, and we'll see you then. Bye, everybody. Roll the credits and cue the music. dun 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 dun